السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن النعيم في الله سبحانه وتعالى most gracious most merciful الحمد لله all praise is indeed due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household his companions may Allah سبحانه وتعالى Bless them all. May Allah bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless this ummah and may he bless humanity at large. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, it is an honor to be speaking here to you and to all those who are viewing and listening and perhaps will do that later on. For indeed, we are speaking about our maker, the one who made us. And we all know that he created us for a purpose. This is what makes us believers. We believe that He has created us for a purpose, for a reason. And this reason is for us to lead a life in such a way that when we depart, when this short life actually comes to an end, we meet with Him in a good condition. That's what it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept many challenges and difficulties in our lives. He has kept a lot of hardship in our lives in order to test us to see I've put you in this testing ground known as the world. When you are faced with the difficult questions, difficult situations, who do you call out to and what do you do and how do you react? So one might say, well, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to test us? Why? Because he decided to put us on the earth and it was not our choice. We did not decide to come onto the earth because we are not the creator. He is the creator and he is the one who decided. He put us in a situation. We have no say in that regard. We have no say. We came onto the earth without having a say. Our identity was chosen. In fact, our complexion was chosen. The face was chosen, where we were born was chosen, who we were born to was chosen, what race we would belong to chosen. Everything, every single thing is part of the test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept for us. So my brothers and sisters, we need to understand that everyone will go through questions. I always give the example of a school that if you were to enroll in a school, the aim of enrolling into primary school is to graduate from the university later on. 20 years later, 15 years later, how many ever years later. That's the aim. But you started off at grade one or even earlier than that. When you enroll in the school, that's not your life. That's only a preparation for the real life. That's what it is. Your life will only begin when you graduate. The same applies to this life. The fact that we've come in, we are like commencing our school. 70 years later, we graduate into the real life. And depending on how serious you were at school, shall be where you will go later on. If you did not work and you decided to dilly-dally drugs, alcohol, the nightlife, the dirty life, for example, filled with promiscuity, immorality, whatever else, then where do you expect to go as you graduate? But if you were disciplined and if you had within you a lot of hard work that you exerted at the time it was needed, then I'm sure you will be in a better place. So when it comes to this world, don't think you're not going to be questioned, you're not going to face situations. Even at school, they have a weekly test, which is not so difficult. Then they have a monthly test and then they have a test every term and a test every year and a big test as you complete that particular course that you're doing, right? And as you develop over the years, the tests become easier or more difficult. They become more difficult because you're becoming a pro. You're now learning. You're now preparing yourself for what is to follow. They cannot keep on asking you one plus one every year. That started right at the beginning. That perhaps was before you even got into the school. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all wise. He knows. He is all powerful. He is the mighty. 
My brothers and sisters, many times we feel that in life we're going through challenges that are unfair. Many people say, why am I going through this? It's not fair. What did I do to deserve this? The mere fact that you have come onto earth, Allah is giving you opportunity to prove yourself to Him. Just like when you know the answers to a very difficult examination or question, you would be able to prove to the examiner that you are indeed different. You know exactly what you're supposed to say in order to get the correct answer. So when Allah has challenged me with something, I need to rise to the occasion, call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand that it's my time to show to him that you know what, I'm going to try my best. And I'm going to, I'm not going to get this wrong, it's going to be correct. I'm going to go back to the scriptures to see how to answer this question, to see how to go through this situation. And I will follow it to the T. And this is the reason why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as much as he was the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, it is the reason why Allah chose that he goes through so many challenges, difficulties. He was born, his father had already passed away. He was an orphan. One might say, orphan, what do I do? That's Allah. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chose it. He decided it. Thereafter, he lost his mother at a very early age. No mother, no father. What's going to happen? Yesterday, I spoke to someone saying, I'm not feeling well, make dua, I don't die because I'm worried about my children. And I said, my sister, yes, we do make dua that Allah give you a cure. But I just want to draw your attention to the fact that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets, he lost his parents at a very early age. That did not stop him from passing every test that came because he, he actually faced all these challenges as per the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So sometimes we don't realize that when we develop a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it actually helps us through the difficulties of life. And mankind is such that sometimes he forgets his maker. He drifts far away. He's gone or she's gone. Drowning in the luxuries of this world, not realizing this is quite temporary. Yes, as much as you are allowed to enjoy what this world has to offer, it needs to be within such limits that you don't compromise your hereafter. Subhanallah. It needs to be within such limits that you don't compromise your relationship with your maker. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. So enjoy the world, but understand during your days of ease, don't miss your prayers. Don't miss your connection with Allah. Don't miss your contact with Allah. Call out to Allah. Use the various names to call out to Allah. He loves it when you acknowledge His power, when you acknowledge that He is the one, He is the maker, and therefore you will not render an act of worship for anyone or to anyone besides Him. It's amazing. Indeed, Allah has so many beautiful names, amazing names of Allah that depict His qualities. And they are actually so beautiful that He says, use them to call out to me. Use them to call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are sick and ill, and I've said this before, you can say, oh Allah, cure me. Nothing wrong with that. It's good. But you can actually go one step higher and say, O oh, owner of cure, cure is only in your hands. You cure me. Subhanallah. What did you do? You acknowledge the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that was well beyond someone who perhaps believes in Allah but has never thought of all these details. And this is why every name has with it some deep meaning. And if you were to look into it, you would have to live by that. For example, if I understand the name Ashafi, and that is the owner of cure, the one in whose hands lies cure, as much as I will pursue medication, and I will go to the doctor because I have to do that. Allah's kept it within my capacity to do that. You cannot just sit back, relax and say that, you know what, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
Yes, he is the curer and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is actually the one who will cure me. But I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't want to go to the doctor. Because if Allah is going to cure me, he's going to cure me. The same applies to Ar-Razzaq, the one who owns sustenance and who gives everyone sustenance. We believe that he is the owner of sustenance. We will ask him, etc. But it does not mean that you sit back and say, well, Allah provides. I'm just going to sit at home. This is a warm duvet, beautiful football every day or whatever else, or play my games. And I was shocked to learn that even adults are hooked onto PlayStation. But anyway, it just depicts the condition we're in right now. May Allah forgive us. And then they say, don't worry, if Allah is going to, if He's written it for me, it's going to come. And then you you suffer within your family and you keep on playing the holy card. What's the holy card? It's a card that has holes in it. What are those holes? You're lying to yourself. You're lying to yourself. You're actually saying Allah is going to provide. Therefore, I justify my laziness. Not at all. Allah will provide, but he gave you the capacity. Oh, Allah provide for me. So Allah says, okay, I will make you fit and I will give you the intellect and I will give you the capacity to walk out and go and try. And when you try, I will actually give it to you. But now we're just not trying. It's like a person saying, oh Allah, if it's written for me to go for Salat al Jum'ah, you will send someone to pick me up. Guess what? It just requires you to make a phone call and then they will come and pick you up. And when they do come, you just need to open your door and walk into the car. They're not going to come and carry you out of your bed. So Allah is powerful. But remember, during the days of ease, get close to Allah. So that in the days of difficulty, Allah will be close to you. We develop a relationship with Allah. Sometimes when we're not well, we quickly call out to Allah. Oh Allah, help me. I'm not well. I'm sick. I'm ill. Through His mercy, He helps us. He cures us. He grants us. He gives us. But sometimes, do you know what happens? We don't turn to Allah until we become sick. Surely it would be more befitting for a believer to develop contact with the one who owns him completely from now. And this is, why, this is my message for today, to say Allah is Al-Aziz, He is the Mighty. Wallahi, He does not need us. We need Him. When we pray, when we fulfill the obligations we have unto Allah, when we reach out to the rest of humanity, when we are kind to others, when we develop our character and conduct, in actual fact, we are helping ourselves. In actual fact, we are helping ourselves. If we've let ourselves loose and we let ourselves go and we don't mind and we are not bothered about what pleases or displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we face the evil of our own deeds, then we will cry. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen. This is why there is something known as tawbah or repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He says He forgives all sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives everything for as long as you seek that forgiveness. So my brothers and sisters, here we have a beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mighty. And we know that in this world, if we had someone who was powerful, even your boss at work or your boss in the house, I don't want to say who that is, but anyway, your boss in the house, it's, it's in the best of your interest to develop a good relationship with your boss because you need to live with them. Come on, you know, you need to have a good relationship so that your life is smooth. Subhanallah. You would develop a good relationship. That's my boss. If they instruct you, thank you so much. Come at four o'clock. Don't be late. You are there at five to four. Subhanallah. You only leave at five o'clock. You leave at five past five. Why? You want to get a promotion. You want to get something good. Wallahi, we develop relationships with human beings in this way because we are concerned about our worldly life that's going to last a few minutes, a few years. Don't you think Allah is the supreme boss when He says, I want you to get up at 7.30? You're so fortunate because we're in winter, right? You get up at 7.30 and subhanAllah, you 7.25, you're up. Why? My boss said so. I don't need to wait until I'm sick to get up for Salatul Fajr and to repent to Allah. May Allah forgive our shortcomings. Amen. But what I do need to do is to develop a link with Him during days of ease. Ta'arraf ilallahi fil rakhai. You notice when you have difficult days, he has promised you that he will give you contentment. You'll be a happy person. You might be struggling. You might have a flu. You might have a cough. You might have an amputation of a limb. You might have eyesight that's being lost. May Allah grant us all cure. But you're such a happy person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open our doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. 
This is why we say, think of it from this angle to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all powerful. He owns the cure. He owns the solutions to the problems you are facing and the problems that I am facing and the problems that the entire globe is facing. One might say, well, why doesn't he solve the problem? It's like telling the examiner when there's a difficult question in your exam paper at your college to say, you know the answer? The examiner says, yes. He says, well, why don't you fill it in? Well, then you did not pass. If you want the examiner to fill in the answer, then what was the point of testing you? Walk out of the school. Subhanallah. The same applies in our lives. Allah has the solution to the problem. Sometimes He leaves it as is. We see people suffering across the globe. Perhaps Allah wants to give them Jannah. I can imagine. May Allah give us all Jannah. Say Ameen loudly. When we get into Jannah, the people who will be in Jannah will be those who will talk about what happened on earth. Do you really think that those who were in luxuries, they forgot Allah, they were far away from Allah, that they would you know, get to Jannah before the others? Notice I didn't say they won't get there because there's hope in them as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannah. But what I did say is the others may be there well before, better place, higher rank, etc, etc. Because they endured more, they went through more. Allah does not allow you to taste pain beyond a certain point. Do you know that? If someone had to hurt you, you would feel the pain. If they hurt you more and more, perhaps you stop feeling the pain at a certain point because you become unconscious. And at a certain point, you stop feeling the pain because you, you pass away. May Allah grant us Jannah to Firdaus. Through Allah's mercy, He just takes you away. He says, I don't want you to endure anymore. You can go. So the soul leaves the body because of so much of difficulty and hardship. My brothers and sisters, we need to know, develop a link with Allah. He is Al-Aziz. He is the most powerful. He has beautiful names. I encourage you, throughout today, you will be hearing a lot of talks, mashallah, tabarakallah. I hope to be here for most of these. But at the same time, I, as I leave this particular opening talk, I'd like to encourage every one of you to go through the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His qualities, to understand them and to realize that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who owns us totally, completely. Yes, when I want something, I will try my best, but I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the solution. And Allah is the one who will ultimately help me. So much so that when I pass away, I need to have so much hope in the mercy of Allah that I'm definitely going to a better place. I must be convinced. Because the names of Allah include the names of the most merciful, the most loving, the most this and the most that. Subhanallah, the most beneficent, the most kind. These are some of the attributes and the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So have full conviction. And this is why we say, go through those names and understand what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. And learn them, look at them, feel the hope and go forward. And at the same time, there is an element of fear because we do know that where we falter, we don't want to displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine you know you're writing the wrong answer and you still go ahead and you're writing it and the examiner is looking at you. Subhanallah, what would you do? Quickly cross it off and write the correct answer. That's called tawbah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.